Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Actually Dyed Art by Science, and this is Fiber Talk episode number 19. And today we are going to be talking about Clune Forest. Before we got into this episode, I just wanted to clarify really quickly. I am testing out different backgrounds in my workroom to see what's going to be suitable for videos going forward. So if at any point during this video you find something really distracting, please let me know in the comments below. A couple months ago I spun this Clune Forest and thought I had filmed the intro and discussion about this particular breed and realized when I sat down to assemble the episode together for this Fiber Talk series, I actually only had my B-roll footage, <laughs> so apologies um, uh, for that. Uh, some details I may not remember as clearly as I would normally if I had just spun this and talked about it afterwards. Normally when I do these episodes I like to have very little time in between these steps so I don't forget anything or in the case of a fiber I've used quite a lot it's sort of a different um, perspective anyway. So Clune Forest, I just wanted to show you the samples that I did. Um, I ended up sharing a fleece with somebody so this is half of a fleece and I do have a little bit left over, not really much at all and I decided to go ahead and dye it because one of the other goals with this series is to get a sense of what you could make with this, like what would be really, really good um, for a particular breed, um, what type of project would be good for a particular breed. And so um, I thought, well, it'd be probably be <laughs> a bit more fun if I actually dyed it. So I have dyed it in the same colorway, uh, Dark Crystal, that you can see on, or sorry, not dark crystal, dark crystals, <laughs> that you can actually see on my website, actuallydye.com and on Etsy, um, that I have for Superwash Merino as a base. So it was actually kind of interesting seeing how different this took the dye. Uh, it's all the same recipe, but different bases will take on the dye in slightly different um, saturations. And this wool, uh, to begin with, was a bit more yellowed. I also have here my trusty fleece and fiber source book, where uh, there are some details about the, the breed in general. And what's interesting about this, in a future episode of Fiber Talk, I'm going to be talking about Shropshire fleece, because I'm currently working on a project with that. Um, but the Clune Forest is actually named after the area in England called the Clune Forest, um, and it is sort of a, um, a breed mixture between um, Hill Radnor, Shropshire, and Kerry Hill sheep. And the name of the sheep, Clune Forest, is actually because of the landscape that they grew up in. As a general statement, uh, Clune Forest is not as easily found in the, in the US as I understand it. However, being in Britain, it is more readily available, but even with the caveat that you're probably only going to find it from a rare breed shepherd. So then that's how I found mine. In the Fleece and Fiber Source book, it is listed as a conservation breed. Now, despite the fact that it is predominantly a meat sheep, it actually has a pretty soft fleece. So in here, it says about 25 to 28 microns, um, which is, it's a little bit like just a hair outside of the fine category. So you might consider it a medium wool or a medium coarse wool, which is also difficult to categorize because this wool felt very, very soft and it didn't have any of the scratchiness that I would associate with a coarser wool anyway. There's also no guard or kemp hairs in it, so it was a really well distributed fleece. Um, and even the locks themselves look um, a bit... Mm, what is the word I'm looking for? They look a bit disorganized, but they do have a little bit of lock structure, so 
you could categorize them as blocky, stable, with slightly pointed tips and a crimp structure that is slightly indistinct, but I didn't find any issues with processing this wool um, with my hand cards, which I did long draw spinning for, so I'll get into that in a second. Um, and there's actually a really interesting story about the fairies of Clune Forest, which maybe I will link to. I'm sure it's on Wikipedia. I can link to that in the description below. Um, and it's best known for being versatile, elastic, and bouncy. In the Fleece and Fiber Source book, it is also noted for being really good for carding, which is what I did. But I did something slightly different because the Clune Forest being a meat sheep, they, the shepherds typically don't invest quite as much time into getting a really, really clean feet, fleece. So one of the things that I had to sort of contend with was a fleece that had a bunch of random little bits of vegetable matter in there. So I'm not as confident with carding as others. So what I did instead was I pulled open all the locks and so I had this big bag of all the locks I had pulled open. I think I had, it was 350 grams raw, and I think by the time I spun everything, it was about 250 grams. Uh, so that's actually not too bad in terms of the raw versus the spun um, final weight, um, about 100 grams difference. But um, with the fleece sort of having a lot of extra vegetable matter, I thought, well, this will probably be a little bit easier to get all of those big bits out, and then the rest of the carding process will be more vegetable matter free. And I'm really glad I did that because had I not, I think I probably would have had a slower spinning experience. So basically what I did is I opened up all of the locks so they were all just kind of jumbled going every which direction, and then I laid it onto the carding cloth, combed row lag after row lag, and then I spun it a uh, long draw. And it is an ideal candidate for long draw spinning. I'm not even that good at it <laughs> yet, but I feel like I did a pretty good job just getting a consistent diameter, and so I'll show you here. Yeah, so you can see that it's a pretty consistent gauge. I mean, it's not super great, but then again, you're going to get a lot of uh, variation in the thickness with long draw anyway, just because it's sort of built into the yarn. It's meant to be fluffy and light, which this definitely is very, very fluffy and light. In terms of working with it, from the raw, it was pretty easy. I only had to wash it once and then rinse it a couple of times, let it dry. It was very soft and light and fluffy. And when I had to make the, the roll lags, they were very easy to make, especially after I did that initial step of fluffing open all of the, the locks. Spinning it was really easy. I've got some footage of that here that I'm going to show as well as use that for a future video. <laughs> And the yarn itself, as a two-ply, it's got a lot of bounce. So I don't know if it's going to come up on the video quite so well. But if I just give it a pull, you can probably see how elastic it is. Feels a bit like stretching a rubber band. <laughs> and the individual yarn, if I can get that a little closer to you. So you can see just how springy it is. I think overall it is undervalued for what it is. Um, I sort of had this notion that it was going to be, uh, how to say this without being indelicate, a little bit disappointing <laughs> at first. And it could also come down to the individual 
uh, animal, um, and also perhaps the shepherd, their views of the animals themselves. So if they are looking predominantly into meat, they may not care as much about the fleece. Uh, the person that I bought this from obviously was um, a fiber-minded shepherd. So this is actually a fantastic example of what I think this particular breed could be like. And like I said, because it was a slightly yellower uh, fleece, so I washed it and it was very clean. There, there was some lanolin left, about like what I usually like to keep. Um, and so that part wasn't difficult, but it just didn't get quite as white as I expected it to. Um, but overall, it takes dyes pretty well. It isn't quite as vibrant as a superwash merino, but that's uh, a separate kind of issue. There's a difference between uh, non-superwash and superwash varieties and the way that colors manifest in terms of um, saturation. Uh, so they don't they don't look as brilliant a color, but overall, I think. It held up really well to the whole process of spinning and even dyeing, and I think with 618 yards I might be able to get something <laughs> big cow-like out of it, I'm not sure. Um, but regardless, I'm very much looking forward to working with it. Uh, I might do some kind of... I I'm really interested in like cardigans <laughs> right now, so I don't know exactly uh, what to do, but if you are thinking of durability in mind, I think that despite the fact that I spun this long draw, it's a really good candidate for slightly hard wearing items. So you could use it for very easily for things like mittens, I think. Probably not with cycling in mind. I've talked about this in other episodes, I'm, su I'm sure you've probably heard if you watched the series. But in particular, I found that Ryland is the perfect wool for making mittens that hold up to cycling. And it's really just holding the grips of the handlebars. When you're cycling, this, this part of the hand always wears out, and I found that I was constantly making new mittens. So instead of doing that all the time, you know, go and try a different wool. And, so I thought, well, this might, might be good for that, so I decided to make my mittens out of Ryland. Not disappointed. This, however, I don't think it would hold up with this preparation quite so well, but if you wanted to do a combed top method, quite potentially this would be a, another good option. Uh, it also seems like it has perfect felting capabilities, although I haven't tried that yet. Um, and yeah, overall, I think it's good for close to skin, so even for people who might have some sensitivities. It doesn't feel too scratchy at all. It feels very soft and lofty. It feels like I could sleep on it. <laughs> um, and so yeah, and, and in terms of the price point, it was relatively inexpensive. I actually don't remember what I paid for this. But because it's one of those fleeces that doesn't often come with a higher price point, like a really nice Merino or Cormo or Ram Rambouillet or something like that, you could do sort of like the budget-friendly alternative that has a lot of versatility. Um, and so I think that would be a Clune Forest here. So yeah, fits in my budget, probably would fit in yours too if... Um, if you were considering buying a larger quantity at once, like a whole fleece maybe. And the fleece sizes can be quite substantial, so you could get anywhere to uh, four to nine pounds, it says in the Fleece and Fiber Source book. Although I bought something that I think was more heavily skirted for fiber enthusiasts, so it was more like one and a half kilos, or about, what is that, three pounds? So on the smaller side, but that's all right. So that concludes today's video about Clune Forest. 
What are your thoughts about this particular breed? If you have any, post them below. If you have any other questions, also post those below. If you're thinking about sourcing it, maybe I can give you some helpful tips, so also post that in the comments below. If you want to support me directly, there's a few ways that you can do that. You can go to my shop, expertlydyed.com, or the same on Etsy, and pick from a variety of things there, yarn, wool, you name it. <laughs> Also, if you want to, you can become a patron on my Patreon account, which I will link below, and that's really nice because you get behind the scenes content, weekly updates, or as near weekly as I can manage, uh, as well as first viewing of all of my videos that I post on the channel, apart from live streams. And you can also subscribe if you haven't and like this video, as that also helps the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching. Bye. So, I have to agree. In the book, it also mentions that it's really good for things like. One fun thing about living in Britain is occasionally when the weather's a little bit erratic like it has been today, suddenly the power cuts out, so <laughs> that's, that's the reason for that weird cut in the middle of this video. Anyway.